three judges sit in a courtroom. The evidence on display before them, a bloody shirt and a knife, is enough to recreate the crime in the viewer's imagination. The shirt lying across the table, with one arm draped over the edge, evokes the absent, perhaps dead victim. The judges seem largely disinterested in the court's proceedings. Behind them hangs a painting of Christ on the cross. Does this crucifixion image certify the pursuit of justice as a sacred endeavor? It might just as well recall how even God himself couldn't get a fair trial. This is one of numerous images that Honoré Daumier created across the whole of his career depicting the corruption of the judicial system. Daumier's watercolor drawing focuses on the essential elements of the narrative moment. There is nothing superfluous in this visually immediate image. Daumier's method of concentrating the viewer's attention on the simple and certain truth of the subject is the opposite of the charade unfolding in the courtroom. Here, lawyers dramatically and perhaps dishonestly overstate their cases in front of disinterested and distracted judges, as if the verdict had already been arranged in advance and the trial is just for show. Created between 1865 and 1868, this work is from the end of Daumier's long career. For 40 years, Daumier had been the most famous caricaturist in France. His images were often satirical criticisms of government corruption, judicial incompetence, and social commentary on modern life. He even poked fun at the contemporary art world. On more than one occasion, Daumier's satirical imagery had put him on the wrong side of the law. Although it should be noted that being on the wrong side of an unjust law was exactly where Daumier wanted to be. Daumier was staunchly anti-royalist, and he created several comical critiques of King Louis-Philippe. One of Daumier's earliest and most famous caricatures was entitled Gargantua. The enthroned monarch is a grotesque pear-shaped giant. He is consuming all the resources of France and extruding legislation. The king was not pleased by this graphic satire. In 1832, Daumier was imprisoned for six months for disparaging the king. Daumier's The Incriminating Evidence was created approximately 34 years after Gargantua. In the intervening time, he had become more surgical in his critique. This comparison of Daumier's early and late work evidences what he had learned in the course of four decades of making socially critical imagery. Daumier had discovered then an image is often more effective for what it doesn't show. Sometimes in art, less is more. Gargantua leaves nothing for the viewer's imagination to add to what Daumier has already described. The incriminating evidence leaves almost everything to the viewer's imagination. Daumier presents the elements of a narrative. The courtroom, the judges, the evidence. But the viewers left to arrive at the verdict. The novelist and playwright Honoré de Balzac called Daumier the Michelangelo of caricature. The comparison of Daumier's The Incriminating Evidence and Michelangelo's famous creation of Adam suggests at least one common strategy. In The Creation of Adam, Michelangelo depicts the moment just before God and Adam touch. They move towards each other without actually touching. The space between their fingertips is filled by the viewer's imagination as we anticipate their connection. 
Both Michelangelo and Daumier understood that requiring the viewer to complete the drama in their own imagination makes the art more effective. The incriminating evidence causes the viewer to imagine the crime and anticipate the verdict. Images such as Gargantua established Honoré Daumier as the greatest political caricaturist of his day. In the incriminating evidence, Daumier invests a contemporary moment with universal meaning. This made him more than just a great political caricaturist. Daumier had become a true artist.